uh, myself wait for today i am going to present on 10 deployments a day a brief on extreme lean crude oil so basically uh, a 10 deployments a day is not about at how many deployments we are doing like all the deployments it's all about production deployment of leases that we are doing here and uh, and moreover that we are not like in one product that we are going to develop or we are working on it so like as we are product development companies uh, outsource product development company so we have to work on a lot of uh, different type of uh, programming languages and different frameworks so it's not about one programming language so we cannot go for like any uh, like uh, uh, enterprise solution or uh, yeah so we have to do something that do have to start from the scratch so yeah webinize uh, i work in a webinize so webinize is an outsourced product development company building app that people love to use and about me i am a webinizer and a lobbyist a uh, blogger you can find my like all my like geek the data on me parihar.github.com a geek a devops guy i love to work with devops people an aspiring tech innovator and trade with we is just to tend to render at the parihar so in the beginning of 2009 and 2010 uh, when when our startup started so so it's a, like an era of struggle with almost everything like we are we are like a startup we are like from out of from the college grads and we are learning a lot of things and the biggest challenge is to deploy our live app on a production environment so we are struggling and we don't have any one knowledge out of it how can really go what we have to follow whom we have to follow so a lot of things in market is available and you can go for it like uh, paid application paid deployment techniques or a lot of things so uh, so we so we started uh, so we have to live our application so we start how we start so it's just like battling for like just you don't know about whom you are battling so our stone age deployment technique is like we created instance manually then we install dependencies one by one okay so we will get installed then this then that <laughs> And then pull from the gate for each instance that you want to deploy. So this is how we deployed at that that our first application. But <coughs> so from this we we have a lot of learner learnings as well. What we learned, like in the end of the year, so doing every task manually on the server, not <coughs> for each uh, deployment, not again. We are not going to do it again. Database migrations are very very crucial for our and rolling backs are more than like are uh, like. These are attacks that, that we really don't think at that time. We need versions for our deployments because we are we directly deployed our we uh, we converted our deployment environment to production environment, so we don't know about what are different different environment we have to take or we have to use. So yeah, these are the learnings from that that year that we started. So let's check our numbers. Ha, so this is embarrassing, yeah, but still I want to really convey this message. That is a one deployment in a week or a two. So we planned like a whole month to do that particular live deployment. We have to go live. We have to go live. That is going on for the full month or full two weeks. So in the in the start of this uh, year 2000, 2000, like in the 2011, we did like a lot of uplifting. We started working from our previous uh, from our previous learning. We have to do our different different environments. So we divide our application in a test state and a production. Brought in caption that is again a like command line tool. I think everybody knew about, about the caption. Now. So we started deploying with that. For at that point of time, that is very cool to us because yeah, we are deploying. Not we are not deploying manually. So yeah. So one more thing that we did and we we try to understand. We implemented a lot of plugin to notify that if any error is coming on the server or when a user is using that application and the exception. So we get notification out of it. So these are the things that we tried doing the 2011 and 2010. So yeah, here's our first mess up. So one of like uh, one of the developers trying to deploy the changes, the requirement changes that it came from the client on the test environment. So he just did it a cap deploy and that's all. He didn't mention the which environment that uh, he wants to deploy. So whole code goes to the production. So everything start breaking. We start getting call from client. What is happening? What is wrong? Why this is happening? So the beauty part of the caption we are able to ro roll back to the previous version. So we save our day. But we learn something out of it. So these are the learnings for for that. We are the loading rolling back operation successful, but database rollback still a hider. At this at that point of time, a lot of people using that operation, and that means a lot of data is already entered. 
And if you do a like migration, or if you do a like changes in your database table, so how are you going to roll back to the particular like previous environment? So we have to really figure out that particular thing as well. Realize that we need to control deployment access as well. So we learned that not each and every developer or a, like a, or a, like person has to have access for the production deployment. So we need to define a role out of it. So yeah, in year 2011 and 2012, we move one step ahead. So we do introduce our first sysadmin at this year. So we did very lot of like uh, funky stuff. We write huge amount of bash tape, like automated for us. That is automated bash tape. It's creating instance. It's like like monitoring our things and keep updating a lot of things. So we we are really very happy. But like handling these bash tapes and running them require a lot of learning, a lot of uh, understanding about the bash, a lot of learning about the system that you are working on, or the, what are the flavors that you are working on. So we went one step ahead. For like as I told that uh, role accesses, so we introduce uh, a web version of Capistrano that is known as Devistrano. It is built on top of like Capistrano, so it gives the it provides you a lot of access me mechanisms. Say like one or two developer can deploy on test environment. It's just a one click. You just deploy on the uh, like particular development tester stage, and then you can give a different people like set of people who who can deploy on the production environment. So this is what we did, and we are really happy with providing this. Still, we are using this, and yeah, we are happy. <coughs> so sysadmin. So for us, with the sysadmin, it's a very sloppy process because sysadmins ask a lot of questions when you when you ask them, you okay, we want to deploy our application code to a server. So what to do? So when we ask, look, okay, put this code to live, and they say, okay, now tell me what are dependencies. I don't have the machines available. What database security? If this system has to be highly scalable or highly available around the corner, like 24 into 7, and what about scalability? And I'm not able to set up this whole system in my own of my system. So what to do? It's keep asking a lot of questions. It's just like a, a sys, like like a developer and a QA volleyball is happening. So in this in this uh, like scenario, just remove QA and a developer and sys admin. Volleyball is happening. So it's really creating a lot of pain, and we are not able to go over what to do, what to find. So in the end of the 2000, uh, like year 2012, so we uh, saw a Tokyo 2012 DevOps day, uh, like a live streaming, a lot of uh, presentations already uh, uh, like uh, on YouTube. So we saw that, and then we figured out, yeah, we have to go something else, or we have to move out from the six admins because they are not working for us. So we learned. In the end of the year 2012, we, just, we learned that this admin are not going to work for us. So we have to really figure out some different different, different mechanism, different way of doing these deployments or like is a, a, like uh, handling our infrastructure. So these are the new numbers. So we can we are able to deploy two deployments in a week. Yeah, but it's not enough. I know that, but for us it's very like it just uh, safe side for us, and we are happy by doing that. So. From 2012 and onward, because we already have that knowledge, yeah, because some DevOps, like uh, the concept of DevOps coming in, and we thought that, yeah, we want this DevOps concept, and it's going to work for us because we are working on similar man manner, and we can really do this. So we, so what we did, what we understand from the like uh, our last failure, like uh, what happened with the sysadmin. So there is a very uh, one wall of confusion between operation team and a development team. Like if like in previous session, like uh, yes, uh, yesterday session that somebody is talking about like um, uh, in our open space, what is operation, what is developer, and there are team management. So yeah, there is a wall of confusion between them, and everybody is keep throwing a data. Uh, developer is throwing a data to operation team. Okay, deploy this, deploy this, deploy this, and uh, then operation team asking me like what to what to what are dependencies I have to solve, where to solve, and a lot of questions. So so this is why that this segment doesn't work for us. So what we think, so we introduce a DevOps concept as whatever we learn from that particular uh, Tokyo to a DevOps representation and a lot of knowledge that we get from, so we have to remove this wall of confusion. There should be no separate operation team like a sysadmin or like a separate dev team. Then we have to combine them. So what we did, we hire like people who know the like lot of uh, uh, like programming, they understand Python and Ruby because we already a lot of people. and. 
we start training them about the infrastructure. We start training them about the how the sys admin works. So now they start, they can really work like a programmer, and they have the knowledge of sys admin, so they can really automate their work. So sys admin keep doing re like repetitive work, so they just remove those repetition. So let's let's look at our like numbers again. So they will speak like a growing company witness like proportional infra growth as well. So what we see like at the end of year like uh, like 2012, the 15 lakh servers and 45 applications, these are the live applications, and seven deployments are being uh, production deployment. We are able to do. Uh, able to deploy seven uh, applications in a week. <clears throat> one more thing that we learned from these things that we cannot stick to one one solution. The every time, the every year, with the new with the new failure, we learn lot new things. So we have to really opt another thing. So we have to keep our learning in an agile way. So we cannot stick to okay, we are going in this way only particular thing. So. So for the DevOps team, there's a, like one of the biggest challenges like continuous deployment. How we can really de like continuously deploy each and every day because we are, have a lot of staging environment, testing environment. So because QA is going to QA and test environment stage for our uh, clients. So how we can really have this type of uh, capability? So we we still stick to the web external so people can really deploy every day like uh, like as many as times as they want to deploy. So. And the second one of the biggest challenges, like keep our infrastructure up and running. After deploying application or production, and we cannot leave them as it is, we really have to understand <laughs> what are the things that we have, necessary things that we really uh, need to make that particular application up and running. So like there is no downtime, we, I cannot say there could be a no downtime, but very minimum downtime. If we understand, if we know in prior that there, sh there might be an application break, or the application is not working, or server is not working, so we have to really act on it the moment we got a notification, and we can really work on that particular thing, and start some different uh, like uh, things that we can really up our application again. So what we did, we, we introduced uh, one of the monitoring system that uh, I think everybody knows in Nagios. So we opt for the like monitoring for the Nagios. So Nagios, we have a lot of plugins, and we include for in our database server, switch and routers, and application servers. But uh, Nagios itself is not a full flash solution for you for for us so so what we did we have to like we have to monitor a lot of services if i say uh, flash media servers is running so we have to really monitor that particular service as well because it's, it's it's streaming our videos and if we are running mongo then we have to monitor that particular service as well if mongo is running or not so we we keep developing a lot of plugins for the nagar itself so we develop them and <coughs> We, we create one full stack of the Nagios with a lot of plugins that we know that is going to work for us and include our Nagios itself. So this is how we work with uh, like uh, Nagios is working for us. For the perform performance perspective, we use Capti and uh, this is the, the graph that is looking at a lot of application. We, we keep monitoring how, how the server is performing, how, how much the na uh, network tra traffic we are getting. So we, we, we keep monitoring that as well. If, if a client comes to us, Okay, tell me how my application is performing. If the server is good enough to give that much of amount of like throughput or like traffic, so how is his performance? So we can really give that data to the client because as 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 move, moving towards from a start a startup to a like good full fledged working organization, organization, so we we are getting these type of requests from the client as well. So so we just. Uh, in like an organization, we just have put up one, one huge screen and just uh, like there are a lot of uh, Nagios models keep coming and the captive, so we, we can watch it. If any server down, we can really see what is happening. So we also uh, like uh, include one wire to wire service as well uh, with Nagios. So if any server went down, any live server, so we get a notification. All the DevOps team get a notification out of it, or like product, or like stakeholder of particular project. So next part is as we see that Capistrano, we keep using a lot of password, like user and a password to deploy the application on the server. So we have to remove it because what happens like, if any person is moving uh, like uh, moving out of the organization, that person is handling your deployment, who is, uh, the person is handling your infrastructure. So we have to somehow revoke those accesses. So we cannot use like these many of password and username on the server. So what we did, we, we come up with one solution like say uh, for the IDAP, there is one central not in the server, we stored the IDAP. And each and every instance or each and every server that we are using can be accessed through the only this particular IDAP. 
So we uh, so we introduce the SS based login uh, with uh, like uh, with LDAP. So it's just LPK key. I think everybody know that patch. So so that deployment or that you if you if anybody wants to access so that person key has to add on the particular LDAP server uh, uh, client. Oh sorry, <coughs> uh, master server. And the security is very important. Like uh, like past seven, eight or nine months back, what we see a lot of spam is happening. I think a lot of people know about like uh, like. Uh, well, uh, a WordPress spam that is happening keeps sending a lot of data from out of so out of your servers. So we have to include some IPS and IDS in, in our infrastructure. So so we included UFW like uh, uh, sorry uncomplicated firewall and with it's not so like like native lot of good configuration to keep telling you what are different of IDS happening, what are IPS systems in your system. Second point is like. As every day we are getting, like if you want to, like I want to attach one new instance to our, like our production application because I am getting huge amount of traffic. So what, what we can do? So we can really go in the back and we can really have this particular like dependency store again. again. So what we do? We create, we, we keep, uh, come up with the idea of like golden image. So, so in this golden image, what we did, we just include all these packages by default, like uh, uh, <coughs> Cathy, Snort, Firewall, EFW, and all the same, Pope, uh, LDAP, and Nagios. So the moment we want to sanction a commission on one of our new instance, we just roll up the instance with this particular golden image and we start working on it. Now the second part of automation is how to install all the other dependencies. So we, there are a lot of options, chef, puppet. So we uh, like go ahead with the puppet. So we create a lot of catalogs out of it and group those catalogs as per our requirement. Let's say if I want to like a, like a catalog for a rail. So what we did, we, we include a rails with a unicorn and a nginx with a mongo. You, we can choose a lot of things. And if you see like uh, with this puppet, we have a lot of catalog like unicorn, passenger, and glassfish, and like uh, framework uh, for Ruby, we have Sinatra and rails, PHPF code, uh, code igniter, uh, cake, a lot of things. And database mongo, postgres, and MySQL. And for version control, we are using from the first day we are using it. We are happy with that. And web server Apache and Nginx, we are still like we are moving uh, like from Apache and porting our application like a whole infrastructure and Nginx. And uh, for quality assurance, I think this is a very important part like we introduced that we introduced for our DevOps team. That is uh, like quality of the application, how the how our application is performing on, on, on as on live environment. So how we can really assure our client that yeah we are the application that is live up and running is giving a good amount of uh, performance. So we have JMeter and Selenium uh, for that particular purpose. We are using this, this stack. So next thing that we come up like the cost. We are spending around like 1 to 1.5 lakh per month for our test in chain environment. So our CEO is like why we are spending huge amount of money for the test in stage environment. Why are we not doing something else for this? So we have to really do something about it. So what we do? So we, so we thought that we can. Uh, why we not own our own private cloud? So we can have them in house. We can really do a lot of things out of it. So we went ahead and bought our own servers, migrated all testing stage in, instances to our own in house private cloud. So if you can ask, we just using a simple container based approach. It's like just open VC. We are still opting a lot of different different solutions like OpenStack and also, but it still it needs a lot of time or uh, like money to make that things sanctioned on own private cloud. So yeah, this is we how we just support our all our test instance. So we are just saving that huge amount of money, and we can really uh, save uh, use that money for different different tasks as well. So let's take a look again at the numbers. So we till now we are managing like around. So, 70 servers and it's still increasing more than 120 live apps and it's still uh, we reach to the point that we are doing 10 deployments in a day these are not a deployment that is uh, test staging test staging uh, can be unlimited the uh, user can deploy as many as one time but we are deploying a 10 production deployment every day so how we deploy these uh, like uh, how we release uh, how we manage these releases is very important so it's not like that if client come to us one morning and say we want this and we have to deploy next day morning. No, it doesn't work like that. So every week we have like predefined of task or predefined or already test uh, uh, functionality to be already tested in our test or stage environment. And that the moment we say yes, 
stable enough, then for the next week we are going to deploy that particular functionality. So this is how our release management works. The second thing is, is like rollbacks that is very important for us. So what we did, whenever anybody or any DevOps team is going to deploy on, on a production environment. So uh, there's a concept of Martin Fowler Flo Flo that brew green deployment. I think everybody heard about it. So we are following that. So when you're deploying an application on a live instance, and there's a huge number of migration that is going to run on the live server. So we already tested state and test, but in case if that deployment fails, so what to do? So we really don't want to, uh, our application to be down for like more than half an hour. That could be like most, uh, like maximum time that we can we can have around them. So by using that view or green uh, deployment, so we what we did whenever we are deploying to the server, our production server, we create a replica of the uh, replica of this particular server and database server, and Point our, uh, <coughs> point our uh, live application to that particular server. If we see everything is working fine on that new infrastructure, and if everything is working fine, then we really uh, make that infrastructure as it is and destroy the old servers and what other data has, what, what other instances we are using. So this is this is how we really get like very minimum amount of downtime, and sometimes we don't even get a downtime out of it. So uh, so this is like how we are dealing, how we are like moving ahead. So next, one of the biggest challenge that tech we are facing because we are uh, like uh, having a lot of infrastructure, a lot of cloud provider like AWS, Rackspace, Linode. So this is very hectic for us to monitor, uh, monitor and to create instances on these different different uh, cloud providers. So we are coming come come up to a solution that we can really uh, like follow it all these our AWS like sorry all these cloud providers in one place. And unify the dash dashboard. We can really, and we can really expose the API so we can have like uh, sanction or commission any instance with predefined set of services, and we can really have the snapshot. Lot of things we can do that. So we are working on this particular like in our project Hippo. We are going to open source this particular Hippo project uh, within uh, two or three months. So uh, any of the DevOps can use it and fork it and can work on it. So the the. The motive behind of this particular uh, 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 the project, is, uh, like the Hippo project, is because if there is no service that can work for you as it is, you want for your organization. So you want a lot of hack and patch out of it when you are using any 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 uh, third party service or third party deployment service. So you want to hack and patch it. So what we so every time we have to keep hacking patching it and sometimes it doesn't work. So what we thought that we have to build uh, some solution or one <coughs> bare bone application that can really work for us. So in this particular dashboard, we can really monitor all of our service to our cloud providers, how, how they are working, how they are looking, all the monitoring service with, with the monitoring APIs. And we can really have the services like, uh, like uh, in creating new server, creating snapshot. So these things are that we are taking care of. So this is what we are, going, what we are trying to do. known as uh, Mongo Marketing, MMS. MMS is but hosted. You can't yeah, have so, so yeah, it's hosted. We are paying for that, yeah. Okay. Because it's still, we, we cannot develop any service out of it. It takes some time. So in that particular time, we are just using some paid service out of it. In one of the slides, you mentioned about uh, uh, database rollback being an issue. Yeah. So in your opinion, what approach works best for the, when you have to roll back database? So as I told you, like Martin Fowler has a very good blog out of it. If you search Martin Fowler, blue, green deployment. So the, uh, uh, Martin Fowler uh, like described very, very uh, like effectively. When you are going to deploy on a production environment, we have to be very, very careful because we don't want a downtime. So what we did, we whenever we are deploying on a live environment, we create a replica out of it, like with a database application, with all the static files and everything. Okay. The moment we deployed, we test each and everything is working fine, and we make that, those changes to the data level. So that won't work with 24 by 7 database, right? By the time you put your data here, there will be people already, already using it. So that that what that I'm saying. So this very minimum like fraction of time, second that we are doing it. 
Like it doesn't take like huge amount of time to do this. No, but by the time you're doing deployment, that will take a bit of work. Because we already did the like testing on. Like we are going to like have the same database on the uh, like same production database. Yeah. We are going to uh, migration, run, run the migration on that particular database. We are just going to replicate the production environment for that yeah. purpose. If it is work, then it's okay. Then we roll back.